So what's the deal with this box sizing border box that you see pretty much used everywhere? Well, that's what we'll be looking at in this video. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And on Fridays we try and do it in 5 minutes. Um, I haven't done a 5 minute Friday in a little while so let's just jump right into it though. If you've been following me for any length of time or if you've followed any other tutorials or just seen CSS on other websites, you've probably seen box sizing border box and uh, it's usually set to universal selectors something like this. But why does everyone do it? It's, you know, what's the point of it? Um, well, to understand box sizing, we have to understand the box model. So just a really quick refresher to make sure you're uh, comfortable with that. In CSS, elements are made out of the content box itself, as well as the padding, the border, and a margin. And by default, box sizing is set to content box. So that means that when we give something a width or a height, we're not setting the size of the element, we're setting the size of the content box. So let's look at this here where I have my content box and I've given it a width of 500 pixels. So you can see it is 500 pixels and I've put this brown box underneath is just acting like a scale. I might as well zoom in this. It's not actually 500 pixels because I zoomed in, but it makes it a bit easier to see. What's gonna happen on this content box if I come and add some padding of say 25 pixels, um, we're gonna see it's actually gonna get wider than this box. So it's now my 500 pixels plus 25 on this side plus 25 on that side. So it's actually 50 pixels wider. And if I come and add a border on here, border of uh, let's say five pixels solid red, just so we can see it. And that's also adding to the total size of my box. So now we're getting bigger and bigger. So even if I take my padding off of that actually, um, we can see that it's still sticking off the side here because the border is giving it this extra width. That's the default behavior and well, honestly, it's a bit annoying having that behavior on there because if I'm gonna come down to my border box box here, which is this one underneath obviously, and let's set our box sizing to border box. I still have a width of 500 pixels on here, but now if I come and add padding of 25 pixels and hit save, it's adding it inside. By changing the box sizing to border box, we're now including both the padding and the border in there as well. Um, and I'm only using widths now, but heights, this the same thing would apply to it. So here uh, we can also come and add a border of uh, five pixels solid red and hit save. And that border is also on the inside instead of being on the outside. So it's a nice way to the border box by resetting the box sizing on it. It just makes things a lot easier to control or. Um, and a lot more predictable. You don't have to start doing math or adding things up. Not that it's difficult, but it's just an extra layer of complexity that you don't really need. So setting a width or setting a height in the instances where you need one and knowing that the padding or the border are just included in that just makes it so much easier. Um, it's also important that you are doing it on the before and after because the universal selector by itself like this will not select pseudo elements. So just to make sure that it's applying to everything, you'll probably want to do it like that. And you might have also seen it done something like this, where instead of being done like that, you'll actually see here it's being set to uh, box sizing uh, inherit. And then what people do is on the HTML, they set the box sizing to border box. So it's always anything you create, it's going to inherit, you know, everything is inheriting it and it's inheriting it from my HTML here. So it's going to win and this is always gonna take into account this. Um, the reason you might see this come up is sometimes something might actually explicitly be set to uh, dis whoops, uh, box sizing content box for some reason. Um, or maybe you're importing something from another project where the default was never changed and it screws up things. You could explicitly set content box on that. And even though uh, I have this on my universal selector, this is overriding it. So the children that would be in here and everything dealing with this would still be using the box sizing content box, whereas the rest of my site would be using uh, the border box. So um, it's considered a little better practice. It depends on your project, whether you want to. And I have put a link to a CSS Tricks article down below if you do want a little bit more information on this specifically. And that's it. I hope you liked this video. I hope this enlightened you a little bit. If you've been seeing box sizing and you did, weren't really sure what it was doing, I couldn't work without it. Or, uh, well, I could because I did for a long time, but I'm so happy that we have this and it makes it just so much easier to work as a default. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up to let me know. Leave a comment down below if you have any comments or questions. Come and join us in the community. There's a link to it in the description below. It's a Discord server. Come ask questions, hang out, just have a good time. 
A big thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here. If you don't know about Patreon, it's a really cool service where you can support creators who give you lots of value. So you can check that out. There is a link to the in the description as well. A big thank you to Lauren, who's my supporter of awesome. Just thank you so much for the super generous support. And I think that's it. So until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.